What we're going to do now is we're going to move on to uh, another thing I heard Reed play for years. Everybody knows that Jerry likes to sing. And he plays the most incredible rhythms behind what he sings. And every now and then he'll take a break and just amaze me. And one of my favorites was always the Wabash Cannonball. So I'm going to pick it for you now. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the tuning. You take the E string, and we're going to take that thing south of the border a whole step. This is one of Jerry's favorite tunings. He did a lot of stuff here. And it's just called a drop D tuning. So you take the E down to a D. And now we're all set to play Wabash Cannonball. Well, there you have my gallant attempt at Wabash Cannonball. Now, basically what I did there was I played some of the rhythm that uh, Jerry would do when he was singing. Uh, the little parts that went like this. Now, he would sing over top of that and uh, play like partial chords. In other words, for the G, he'd come down here and do this. Now, you can do it like that or you can come down here and do it. I prefer to use that one because I play with all five fingers and I'll use my pinky right here on my right hand. So when he was when he'd actually sing the song, he'd start it off with from the big Atlantic Ocean and so on and so forth, and then he'd, I'm gonna just play the chords. I'm not gonna I'm gonna spare you the singing. Watch the right hand uh, little roll there going on. Now you can see how I'm pairing the second and third fingers together. You want to spend some time working on this rhythm because without it everything's going to fall apart on you. You got to get that uh, that rhythmic almost drum sort of sound going on that, that Jerry does and remember you got to tie the second and third finger together this time. It's different than uh, than last time. Most of the chords he's doing are pretty much basic chords but I think you'll notice that when um, for instance when I'm doing the, the walking bass line and this is where it gets complicated. You got to play the, the chord you got to play the melody. Okay. And then you got to play that walking bass line. That sort of thing. Now we put them together. So you're sort of doing three things at one time here. And it uh, really becomes complicated and you have to be so careful with your fingerings. 
So I think we're going to break this down into, into sections. I'm going to teach it a little bit at a time before we try and put the whole thing together. So let's split the screen and we'll take the little first section there. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get that pocket started, get that groove. Watch the right hand here. And I'm just doing a little pull off down there. Pull off. Hammer on pull off. start to sing. What I'm going to do now is just keep his, his sort of rhythm going. Now this is an interesting little chord here. I'm just putting my first finger here and my pinky on the five on the sixth string and going back and forth between the, the third fret and the fifth fret. Now if you want to complete that, you can come down here and grab that B note on the, the fifth string. Now what I do is I'll use my pinky here for that string and really pick it good and hard. And then to the A7. Then he'll go into the to the almost the sort of an interlude here where he just does what he calls clawing. He's just playing out of a pocket here and, and setting a sort of a mood. Now you're going to do an A7. And then we're going to slide that pinky in to the fifth fret. Okay, now one other little move that he's going to make here is when he goes to this G, come up here and grab your G. Remember, we have the E string tuned down, so you got to grab your, your instead of like this, you got to grab your G note up here. Now we're going to make it a seventh. There's two sevenths here. All right, and we're going to take and pull off the first, the low one here. Okay. again. Okay. Lots of pull-offs. And back into that pocket again. Okay, now he does all of this before he ever plays the melody. First he does the singing part. into the little groove. And I feel like I kind of push, I'm pushing that a little bit, a little ahead of the beat. Okay, let's work on that. And I'm going to show you one other thing here. When he plays the melody, you have to kind of hear it in your head. Okay, and he's still got that groove going, but we're going to go like this at the same time and try and keep that same feel for the music. There's that G. Okay, and what I'm doing there is I'm just lifting off the A. Watching, watch the, the walk up at the same time. And then back to the pocket. Sliding into the melody. D7. 
27th. Here's the, the fingering is very tricky here. That's back to my D major, and then into that G. Down to the A. And then up into that G again. Just, you just take these sections like this one, and don't play anything else until you can play that really well. Then practice it in the G. And bear in mind, you don't need to put this note here, because most of the time Jerry didn't. Okay, and then practice the pocket. Now he'll hold that G. Let his hand rest a little bit before moving into the A. Okay, and then think of the pocket itself as a song because it really is, and it's a great rhythm. And you can embellish on it. Okay, now that you've got all of the moving parts and everything to this song, and there's a whole lot going on there. Uh, take it le each section a little bit at a time. I think you'll find that you'll learn it a whole lot quicker that way, because it does repeat a lot. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go back, I'm going to play it with a split screen, I'm going to try and play it slow, and I'm going to try and put all the notes in the right spot, and you can play along. 